Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Melt Cosmetics She's in Parties eyeshadow palette. So if you are interested in seeing my thoughts on this palette, as well as seeing how I did this look using this palette, then just keep watching. So this baby finally came in the mail. I ordered it from Melt Cosmetics website, which I do regret. I wish I would have just waited and ordered it from Sephora because Sephora's process is so much easier and also I think Sephora has a way better return policy. So I kind of risked it for this one. But like I said, this is the Melt Cosmetics She's in Parties palette. You guys saw that this purple palette was coming out and you were like, all right, Morgan, when are you getting this review up, girlfriend? Because I need to know if it's good or not. <laughs> so yes, I did pick it up. I'm very excited to review it for you guys today. Just so you can kind of have a background on my opinion on Melt's shadows in general, I really find their palettes to be very overpriced and very inconsistent. I even advise you guys, maybe wait till reviews start coming out before purchasing this palette because I have had completely opposite experiences from Melt Cosmetics. Cosmetics. Like, I've had some nice palettes and then I've had some horrible palettes from them. I don't pick up every single palette that they come out with, but if the color story intrigues me, I'll pick it up. My mom also has a couple too, so I've tried some of those as well. For the most part, I find their formula to be overpriced. I don't really think they're worth the money compared to what you can get at the same price point. But what I do love is their color stories. So that's kind of what gets me about their brand as a whole is I love their color stories and I can definitely make what I feel like I don't like about the formula work for me as long as the color story is great. Like, I do enjoy the smoke obsessions. I don't like their metallic formula in this. Same thing with the Gemini but the color stories on these are really great. I was very curious about this one because it is purple palette. So this guy is $48. It's available right now on the Melt website as well as Sephora which I do recommend because they have a better return policy. At the moment this is an online only exclusive at Sephora and it is an eight shade palette with moody plum tones in matte metallic and iridescent textures. The packaging that we have here, she's really cute. I don't know that I love it but you guys really did seem to like it and then you open it up, you have a mirror and then you have eight shades. I do think $48 is a bit steep for eight shades in general. You know, I'm not one to judge. I'll buy a Charlotte Tilbury quad, Tom Ford quad with no problem. So just based on your guys' feedback and the quality that I feel like I'm getting, 48 for eight shades is a bit steep. Now I think Melt seems to be moving away from their stacks. There is a She's in Parties stack that came out. I've never purchased any of those but according to Temtalia she said that all four of the shades in that stack are in here but the formula is improved. So just kind of looking at the palette and the color story here it definitely is a deeper palette. So for me, when I looked at this, I wasn't taken away to heaven just because I don't like really deep plum dark kind of purple colors. I really like vibrant lilac purple shades of that nature. So even though this is a purple based palette, it's not my personal preference for purples. Purple is a difficult formula, so I was very interested to see what they would do with it. You have a lot of burgundy brown based purples here towards the end. When we are getting more towards the front here, this is kind of my purple color story. This is the portion of the palette that I most definitely will be reaching for on a daily basis. Down here, I just, it's supposed to be a gothic color story, so I'm not going to knock them for that, but I would have liked to see a little bit more lighter shades in here. Formulation wise, I'm going to work from here to here while showing you the swatches, but you have a duochrome light shade. This is going to be your inner corner color. Next to it, you have a metallic shade, which which is not super pigmented, but it still is very pretty on the eye. You have to use this one with a finger because it can get crumbly. You don't get much of a pigmented base to it, but it's about the finish and I think it's a good shadow overall. Don't let what I'm saying make you think it's a bad shadow. It's not. It's a good one. Just know what type of formula you're getting. Two more mattes, two deeper metallics moving down, one more final matte, and then one final metallic shade. So five metallics, three mattes, not too bad. Based on the swatches, honestly, this palette swatched very impressive. The mattes were extremely pigmented, the shimmers as well. Nothing felt too chunky to me. The only thing I would say that was maybe disappointing when swatching was Strange Love, which is like the most gorgeous shade in the palette, but the effect on the eyes, it's a good shade. Don't let that 
kind of turn you off. As far as the colors that were put in here, I wish they would have done more on this end because I feel like all three of these deep metallic shimmers, when you put them on the eye, they're not going to look too different from each other. For me, they're not going to be colors that I use very often. I don't go for deep metallic shades like that. And I think having one or two of these is fine, but I just feel like having three is a bit overkill in a palette of eight. I would probably only reach for one deep shimmer shade, so three is too much for me. They're too close to each other, and you could easily stay within this color story and do something different with these three, but they're too close to each other, and I think that's pretty disappointing because you are limited in the amount of shades you're getting for the price, but they're all good quality. I just think they're too close to each other, and that's something important that I look for in a palette. Does each color stand on its own? Personally, I really don't think so. I would have liked to have seen maybe even a black, and that black would have been fine, especially with this kind of color story. Just something a little different because here it's looking like too much of the same. If you like a lot of smokier, grungy, plummy eyes, this is going to be the palette for you. If you like more lighter, purpley shades like I do, I mean, honestly, like it is a very pretty palette when you do this to it, but I know in every look that I'm gonna do, I'm only gonna grab for like one shade over here. So what I'm gonna do next, is I'm gonna take you to the tutorial and you'll see how I got this look. And as I went along, I kind of told you my thoughts on the colors, the color story and all of that. So some things might be repetitive, but I wanted you to experience it with me firsthand as well. I did this tutorial without even swatching it. I just put them straight on the eyes, put them to the test, and you'll see how I got this look. I'm quickly gonna pop on some MAC Painterly Paint Pot as my eyeshadow base, just a little bit. The first shade I'm going to take is Total Immoral. I am using a Kaleidos S1, and I'm very impressed with this shade. I was worried it would be really chalky and pull light on the skin, but luckily it actually pulls a little bit more deep on the skin, which I think just for what makes sense in this palette. I was hoping it was going to pull a little deeper because if it pulled lighter, it just it wouldn't look good. So I'm very happy with this shade. It's the perfect transition crease color for this look or even just an everyday crease color for this palette. With the Luxie 229, I'm taking Last Caress. I mean, these first two colors are up my alley. I love these. This shade is one of those shades where a lot of times you'll find in other palettes, it can be a little bit patchy, harder to work with, not the case with this one. It's blending out very beautifully. It pulls a little bit more deeper on the skin, I think, which again, not a problem. It actually pulls pretty deep on me. I think this palette's going to be very good for deeper skin tones, you guys, because you got a lot of very nice deeper shades here and they are blending quite well. I'm very impressed. Um, I'm going to take that bigger initial brush that we use and I'm going to try and go back and re-blend a lot today. So just be prepared for that. But that shade also passes the test. You know, it's not packed. It's not streaky and it's blending out very very well. Morphe M507 and we're taking Mean Streak and again this could go very very wrong and uh, it's awesome. It's very pigmented so please use a light hand as you can see just with the very little touch I put into the pan it's super dark and as you can see it's working out quite seamlessly as well. I'm very impressed with how these mattes are working. I was really worried because it's a purple base palette and melt shadows just don't impress me in general. I'm feeling impressed you guys. I really am. I'm going to take Lost Control. This is with a Kaleidos S4 brush and I'm patting this right on top of the mattes. This isn't a color that I really see myself using too much from this palette. It's just too dark for me, but of course I did want to test it out and it has very subtle red glitters. It's really pretty. It's not too shimmery. It's more so about the glitters I think for this one. It's really, really dark. I don't know. I don't love this color, but that's just personal preference. There's nothing bad with the quality. I am getting a little bit of fallout, but nothing too crazy. And with this shade, once you kind of blend over it, the glitters do kind of go away. Next, I'm taking Sleepwalk. I'm using a refer number 14. And again, this is quite impressive because sometimes shimmers don't do well on a blending brush, just being applied straight to the eye. But as you can see, the color here, it's very concentrated and it's applied 
applying very, very easily. And the shimmers here aren't extremely foiled or metallic or anything. Honestly, when you apply them to the eye, they kind of look a little bit more on the matte side, honestly. You know, we're looking a little punched in the face right now. I'm gonna take some of Skeleton Kiss right here. This has a very pretty pinky duo chrome to it. And I really like this shade in the palette. I think it was a nice touch and it really does open the eyes. I'm using a refer number three brush, by the way. So I'm gonna use that to hopefully kind of open up this eye area a little bit. With the finger, I'm taking Strange Love. This is definitely my favorite color in the palette. This one is right up my alley. Um, it's not extremely pigmented or anything, but it really is about that finish that it gives to the lid. It's gonna brighten everything up and it's gonna layer over all of these darker colors as well. Uh, for a more wearable look, definitely just stick to like these four, but had to experiment, blend it out very good. So I'm gonna finish the look now. So here we are with the final look lashes and all of that if you're curious about anything else that I'm wearing I will link it down below in the description box what you guys wanted to know is this one good quality is it worth it and yes I think this is probably the best quality palette that I've personally tried from melt like I said I haven't tried all of their palettes but I think this formula is definitely a hit especially since purple can be a harder to formulate color honestly they did a fabulous job all of these colors were very easy to work with extremely pigmented extremely blendable and I think you know if you are interested in this color story in this palette at all just know you are getting a very good quality palette so I can't complain about that and I do think she's a really pretty palette even though I did kind of complain earlier like it is too deep of a palette for me I'm not gonna reach for this a ton because I don't wear smoky eyes like this on the daily only like these first three shades are going to get a lot of use from me everything else in the palette probably not so for me I would say this palette probably isn't worth it if you're at all like me you could pass but if you are into these grungier deeper plum smoky eyes absolutely please go for it this is a great palette for you and it's such good quality I'm very impressed they've redeemed themselves with this I really do hope that all of the palettes that they come out with from here on out are like this a couple palettes that they came out with I can't even remember but it's like their bronzier one that one was okay but I felt like the metallics were crumbly and just not that good they really did redeem themselves with this one so I like it a lot I do recommend it and they finally did a good job with this one so that is all I have for today's review I hope you guys enjoyed it I'm very happy that I could get it up for you guys if you aren't subscribed to my channel already I would love it if you would take the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one